So hello everyone. Um, we have Frank with us. He is going to talk about Java FX and Raspberry Pi and how to have fun with them. So a little bit about Frank. Uh, he's a software developer over 25 years of professional experience who loves to experiment with Java on the Raspberry Pi. He blogs on webtechie.be and has written a book getting started with Java on the Raspberry Pi as well. You, you can find that book on LeanPub and Electrode as well. So having said that, uh, I'm again excited and welcome Frank and thank you so much. You can go ahead and start your talk. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me at JLOV. I love to be at this conference. It's a great event again. Um, so as you mentioned, I'm Frank Laporte. I live in Belgium. I do a lot of blogging and I, I'm programming since I was 10 years old and it all started with this uh, Commodore 64. Uh, it's already 35 years ago. And the fun thing about this, this uh, computer, I only had one game, but I was able to control my Lego trains with it when I attached uh, a, relay, a relay board. So that were where electronics come into the play and, and you have some combination of software and controlling physical stuff. And that's what this uh, talk is all about. Uh, the last 10 years, I worked at Televic where we built these uh, screens for uh, for trains and, and trams and metros and where we use Java, a lot of Java on the wayside to collect these real-time data like you see on the upper image, uh, the London Underground uh, status and bring it to trains and also there have, have Java applications running. Uh, but uh, a bit of a scoop. Uh, last Friday uh, was my last day at Televic, and next Monday I will work uh, start at a new company where we built uh, AI-driven uh, robots. Uh, but more about that later, I guess. Um, I also am a volunteer at Coder Dojo, where we uh, inspire kids to get involved into computer and where they learn to program and to present their work and, and work together. And the coaches there are volunteers, and they bring their own knowledge to these events. And that's where I first got into contact with uh, Arduino and Raspberry Pi because the other volunteers brought these devices to show them to the kids. And that's where uh, I first uh, tried to experiment with them. And I built uh, for my son this drum boot controller and you have this small screen, a touchscreen display, um, which is connected to a Raspberry Pi. Again, a relay board to uh, toggle some 220 volt and, and 15 volt on and off. Uh, and also an Arduino to control LED strips. So he has this full touch screen interface uh, with all very cheap components and you still have a lot of functionality. And that's where the first experiment started for me with Java on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I even included a, a web server so that we can toggle from anywhere in the house the red light signal so he knows he has to come uh, to the dinner table, which is of course with Java, very easy to implement. Now, uh, all these uh, experiments, so uh, first wrote a four page article for Magpie, the official magazine of uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And indeed, it ended up in this book, as you uh, said in the introduction. Um, so in the book, I give a crash course for Java for the newbies. But of course, as an experienced Java developer, you will find a lot of inspiration here is how to use the pins, how you connect electronic stuff to a, a Raspberry Pi, what you can do with it, what kind of devices you can control. Uh, everything you see here are examples created with Java and all the code is on GitHub, of course. Um, and you can just download it and try it for yourself of like getting the weather from an uh, open weather map um, API and display it on an LCD display or use Spring to read the state of a button and, and control a LED. And at the end of this presentation, I will give you a, a little bit more information about even using a queue, a queue installed on the Raspberry Pi, controlling it from a Java a VIX application from a web browser, all to control um, these uh, LED strips. Um, so uh, let's start from the beginning. What is Raspberry Pi? It's a very small, cheap computer, but everything is there. So if you look into the, the, the left big one, which is actually only nine centimeters, you have uh, four USB ports, you have network connection, you have uh, monitor connections, you have Wi-Fi on board, and you have these pins, and you have this small uh, version. So there are four different uh, versions of uh, the Raspberry Pi. And uh, one special one is the compute that you use uh, to build your own electronics projects. Um, but there were new versions. So there were a, per, a few uh, announcements this year. So they have the new compute module four. Uh, there are uh, more than uh, 30 versions of this board, depending on the number of memory you want on there. And the idea of this is that you uh, build your own hardware around it with the connections. They cost from 25 uh, up to 95 euros, I think. Um, 
and you have a base board that you can use for experimenting. So with all the possible connections, and then you can design your own electronics uh, for the projects that you really want to build. So this is uh, becoming the, the small PC, which was designed to to, to uh, inspire everyone into computing. Um, and now you, it's even become a tool that you can use to build uh, professional products. And they also launched uh, uh, only a month ago, the Raspberry Pi 400. Um, and that's a full uh, keyboard uh, with a Raspberry Pi included in there and all the connections. So you see everything is in this uh, keyboard. You only have to connect a monitor, a power supply, a mouse and, and you can get started. Now, this really reminded me of that very first PC uh, where it all started for me. I connected my relays to this, this connection on the back and you have the same connection uh, on the Raspberry Pi. Now, there are a few big differences. Um, if you recalculate the price of that Commodore 64 35 years ago, it would cost now um, more than uh, al almost uh, 1,500 euros, while the Raspberry Pi 400 is under 100 euros um, so that's a very big difference and uh, also another difference is the screen that was the screen uh, where I started programming so you had this print hello world um, but that was a very basic screen yeah it was also uh, one of the very first computers that you could use to do this kind of stuff um, now this is a screenshot of the Raspberry Pi 4 I was using to write my book and I have two Visual Studio codes open I have an Arduino uh, IDE open um, I have a Java program here. I have my File Explorer terminal. So this is all on a 4K display attached to a Raspberry Pi 4. And you can even attach two of these screens. So that's really a powerful PC for a low price. Um, I get asked a lot of why would you use Java on the Raspberry Pi? Wasn't the Raspberry Pi designed for Python? Uh, well, actually, yes, when they designed the Raspberry Pi, they were looking for a fruity name. So you had Apple. They were a bit inspired by it, so they chose Raspberry, and they were using a lot of Python, so that became the Pi and also the, the number Pi. But in my opinion, it could also have been the Raspberry J or something like that from Java, Java uh, because that works just as well. So why Java on the Raspberry Pi? Because you can and because you will learn. Since I started writing on this book and doing this experiment for the drum boot of my son, I learned a lot about electronics and how you can control it uh, from Java and also from other uh, uh, environments. Uh, Java uh, is too old for the Raspberry Pi, but no, uh, isn't that an outdated language? Isn't Java dead? And uh, the, the much heard question, no, uh, Java is even newer than Python. Um, and since we have this fast re uh, release cycle of every six months, we have improvements in the, in the language, we have new features, but we also have improvements, uh, especially for the embedded devices and also for Java FX, which is following uh, the same uh, release cycle. A side note, these graphs that I uh, use here, I needed them for my book and I could have made them in Excel or, or maybe in a Photoshop, but that would have taken me hours and hours. Uh, so I just made them with Java FX, uh, which took me only a few hours uh, to find out how I can create these lines because I've never used that before. It's so easy uh, and it's also part of the sources uh, of my book. Um, if you don't believe me why you should use Java um, on the Raspberry Pi, even Oracle uh, thinks this is a very good idea and a match made in heaven. Uh, as I written a starting guide and uh, it's one of the most uh, liked uh, Twitter posts of Oracle. Um, now, the Raspberry Pi comes with a full operating system provided by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It was called Raspbian OS, but it has been renamed to Raspberry Pi OS. It's Debian based. And if you go for the full version, um, then you will have OpenGDK 11 pre-installed. And this full version also includes a lot of tools that you can uh, already have pre-installed on there. Visual Studio Code is not part of it, but they do provide a version uh, for the ARM or ARM64 processor, uh, which is used on the Raspberry Raspberry Pi, so you can run Visual Studio Code, as you have seen already in the screenshot, uh, on the Raspberry Pi. And uh, with the additional uh, Java extension pack, it is a full Java uh, development environment. So for uh, people who want to get started with software development, uh, but don't want to, to, to buy an expensive laptop, you can start with a Raspberry Pi. Um, so if you have this uh, Raspberry 
Pi OS uh, installed on an SD card and we first boot the Raspberry Pi, then you will, uh, then you're able to open a terminal, it's Linux, uh, do Java the, uh, minus version, and you will see that indeed it's open GDK uh, 11 uh, pre-installed. So we are ready uh, to do Java development or run a Java application on the Raspberry Pi just from the start. Um, if you want to use uh, Java FX on the Raspberry Pi, there are different uh, possibilities. One of them is uh, Bellsoft, uh, who provides a version of the GDK, which includes JFX, um, Java FX in the GDK. So that makes it very easy to start an application. You don't need to do uh, a reference to modules and stuff like that. Um, it's perfect for proof of concepts and to get to learn uh, all these things. It's also the, the way I used it uh, in the book. Uh, you can just download the Debian file from that website, install Java, and then you will see that you have an, an other JDK version and it has JFX included. But of course, uh, Gluon is the, the driving force behind the Java FX framework. On their website, you will find different versions and they are really pushing it forward uh, with this version 16 early access. You have some very nice new features that you can uh, use on the Raspberry Pi, uh, like uh, direct rendering. Uh, where you take over the, the X11. So um, your applications become becomes the only thing you see on the screen. So the people cannot open uh, a browser, for instance, which is perfect for a kiosk application or stuff like that. Um, and it's really powerful. If you see this space uh, game, created by Gerrit Grunwald. Uh, this is a video running on the Raspberry Pi and you have nearly uh, 60 frames per second with some very smooth uh, animations. This is Java VIX running on a Raspberry Pi. Yes, indeed. Um, I've done some other experiments, uh, which you can find on my blog. Uh, one of them is uh, Java uh, FX 3D. Um, this is a very old demo of Java FX 3D. I think it's one of the earliest ones even, uh, but you see that you have this very uh, smooth 3D uh, animation that you can do uh, controlled by the keyboard. We have also this very uh, nice Java FX uh, game engine, FXGL, uh, which can also run on the uh, Raspberry Pi. I use it for performance testing, so let me skip a bit further. Uh, you see that you have 25 dots animating uh, at random on the screen, and this goes up to 30 frames per second. There are some uh, ways to improve this, but that's all work uh, in progress. Okay. Um, Another big uh, advantage of the Raspberry Pi is the header. Those 40 pins that you see there uh, on the board where you can connect electronics. Um, there is a lot of uh, stuff there. And if you want to understand what's uh, on these pins and how you can use them, I created the Maven library. It's uh, more described on my uh, blog again. Uh, but I also created this little Java FX demo application uh, for the book, uh, which shows you with the Java FX uh, table um, based on this library, what are those uh, pins and uh, if we go a bit further because there were different versions of raspberry pi with 8 uh, 26 and 40 pins uh, on these 40 pins you see that you have 3 volt 3 and 5 volt and then different gpios which are pins to connect uh, electronics uh, a gpio is either a one or a zero in electronics that means 3.3 volt or zero volt and as you can see on this picture you have uh, these nice nice kind of um, um, boards that you can slide over these pins to find out where are the pins, where can I find a voltage or a ground or where can I connect a device. Um, there are different ways of to communicate with electronics. I squared C, SPI, UART are all examples of them. Um, for instance, SPI is used to control this kind of eight by eight LED matrix screens, um, where you can design your own uh, animations or images or ca characters like you see. Uh, I used Serial to communicate with an Arduino to read a, a light sensor and show it again in the Java FX uh, chart. All this again, uh, uh, connected to the Raspberry Pi. If you want to start with this kind of uh, fun experiments, I advise you to buy an electronic starter kit. You find them from 20, 25 euros and up uh, on eBay. Um, make sure you have enough resistors and LEDs because this is the basic uh, to start with. Uh, maybe you can have a kit which is a bit more expensive with an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi included. Make sure you have a servo, a motor, a distance sensor, an LCD. Those are all the, the fun stuff to start experimenting with.
Now we're going to do a little example application with a LED. So a LED is a very small light. You have a plus and a minus pin. And if you put a voltage on it, it will light up. Um, you have some special flavors like the RGB LED with three pins. Uh, if you want white, you need to put a voltage on all three pins or uh, these RGB uh, LED strips. And uh, these strips are a bit special because every LED light here is again an RGB LED, so three colors, but it has a small chip inside, which means that you only have to connect a voltage ground and a control signal, and you can really say, I want the fifth or the tenth LED to be blue and the other one's green. So there you can create uh, animations on these uh, LED strips. Now, uh, a resistor is needed in most of these uh, uh, experiments because, as I said before, the, the Raspberry Pi gives you 3.3 volt if you put a pin high, so if you want a, a state one or a, a high state, uh, while a LED most of the times only need a, a lower voltage. So a resistor uh, in between will make sure that we don't burn our LED, which I have done a few times. It's not that bad, they are very cheap, but you don't want to destroy all your components, of course. Again, with a, a Maven library I created and a demo application, uh, it is possible to calculate these values. Um, I can uh, skip to the next one because um, based on this uh, Java library and Java JavaFX um, and the support of Gluon, I was able to create um, an application which is in the app store of both uh, Google and, and Apple, uh, all based on one code base. Uh, and with GitHub Actions, this was pushed um, as uh, builds native builds for uh, different operating systems and also to the uh, stores, the app stores. Uh, you can find a full description of this uh, on my blog again. Uh, some screenshots of the application. It's a work in progress. It was just a proof of concept. Uh, if you want to contribute, you're welcome on GitHub, of course. Now let's do a quick experiment with a button and a LED. So we have a three volt three, we go to the button and the button goes back to one of the pins, which will become an input pin. And from an output pin, we will go through the resistor and then back to the ground. So we have here a closed circuit of the LED and we can turn it on and off. That's the ID. These are the uh, pins being used. Um, so, and this is how it looks like. We use a breadboard, some wires. These are all the components you find in a starter kit in such an electronics uh, starter kit. And now I glued this small board on my screen to show you how you can do this uh, from the terminal. So this uh, LED is connected to our Raspberry Pi. Uh, from the terminal, we say that we want this pin three to be an output pin. And now by writing a one to this pin three, uh, we can uh, turn the LED on. And if you do it with a zero, it's off again. So you see it becomes a very um, easy connection between software, something you do in the terminal and a physical thing being uh, this LED. And the same can be done uh, with the button. So if we tell our system, our Raspberry Pi, that we want to use another pin, uh, in this case, it's pin number uh, five as an input pin. And we can read then the state of this, uh, this pin. It will be low or a zero because it's not clicked. And now if we click uh, the button and read it again, it's a one. So you see, it's very easy to control uh, these very basic components. I agree, this is all basic stuff, no rocket science. It's just to show you how easy uh, this all is. Now, uh, let's bring in uh, Java. And I have this very, very small uh, application. And what you see here is that I actually run the exact same commands as we just did in the terminal, but then do it from, uh, from Java. So we say, execute this function. And then we do uh, a loop of 10 times and we put this uh, pin on and off uh, uh, 10 times with a sleep of half a second. So um, I told you before the Raspberry Pi comes pre-installed with Java 11. And uh, one of those nice uh, features of Java 11 is that you can run a Java code without the need to compile it. So if we just create this Java text file with the same code that I show you before in the slide, and now we say Java with this file, we don't need Java C or anything or Maven or, or Gradle. We can just run the simple uh, code uh, directly uh, with Java 11. And as you see, the LED uh, goes on and off. 
Um, of course, there are other ways to do this. Py4j is one of them. Uh, Py4j is a library which is a uh, Maven dependency which you include into your proje project <clears throat> and which will use native code um, to talk to the GPI host and will give you a lot of uh, additional functionality which is much easier to use than executing a command as I just showed you before. Uh, Py4j, the idea is there to move on to a version 2 which is Java 11, which uses the modular approach um, and more importantly uh, the native library wiring Py got deprecated last year so we need to move to a new one, Py GPIO, uh, which will also support the newer versions of the Raspberry Pi which is uh, not really the case. Uh, at this moment. Um, in my example application, I will also use Java FX uh, and Tiles FX. Tiles FX, again, a library created by Gerrit Grunwald, one of the Java FX gurus, uh, I can say, um, to build this small application which shows uh, the Java version, a switch tile to put a LED on and off, and uh, a button state in a graph. Now, by using this Tiles FX uh, library, this becomes all very easy. Um, we need the dependency to Tiles FX, but also to the Py4j core. Um, uh, library um, and then we can instantiate a GPIO factory. So this is uh, provided by Py4j and this G GPIO uh, factory will allow us and the controller to provision a digital output pin. So we have an output pin assigned uh, to a uh, pin number three. And uh, as soon as we have done this, we can turn a let on and off by this high and low state. So it doesn't, it's, a, it's no longer a, a command we are executing. It's really a Java object uh, that we can uh, call and, and use the function specifically uh, assigned to this uh, type of object. Uh, for a button, um, so it's an input, we want to read something uh, from the button, uh, it's GPIO, it's a pin number five, and for a button, uh, we can attach an, in, an event listener, so whenever the button is changed, that we get an event, and uh, we're going to use this event to build up an XY chart series. So we want to show this in, in a graph. So we are gonna use a chart series and every change is added to the series as a timestamp and the state uh, of the button. And as we use uh, tiles FX, uh, we can add a switch uh, tile. Um, and whenever that the switch uh, is uh, changed, so is released, uh, we put the let high or low depending on the state of the switch. And for the button, we do something similar. So we have a smoother chart and we attach it to the event listener of the button events. Now I'm going a bit uh, quick through this code. I only have half an hour and I want to show you a lot. Uh, but if we combine everything together into one application and compile it as a jar, then we can run it on the Raspberry Pi. And then you get this. So we have this small seven inch screen. I have my setup here. Uh, as you see with the mouse, I'm changing the switch style and you see that the let, and go, let goes on and off. And if we push the button, you will see on this chart that this line is drawn that goes up and down. Now, there's a special thing in this setup. I also have this distance sensor uh, and that's the upper chart. And so it does a measurement every second. And by moving your hand uh, further or closer of the chart, you see that this upper chart uh, goes up and down. So here we combine uh, already three components, a let, a button, and a distance sensor, and uh, it's a touch screen, so even touch events work perfectly with JavaFX uh, here on this Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is a, a second uh, test setup that I've done with two of these des, uh, distance sensors and the tiles uh, FX with uh, another, another tile, which shows some kind of distance sensor or speed control. You can choose whatever you want to use it for. Um, there is a second uh, example I want to show you uh, where I use a queue system. So if you never used the queue before, it's some kind of post box and you say as a client, I want to describe, uh, subscribe uh, to all the messages from this post box uh, of a specific uh, post box. And you can have a sender which publishes messages in this post box and then the client will receive that message. Now, this looks a bit overkill uh, for uh, only a sender and a client because they could talk to uh, each other directly, of course. Now, the idea of this queuing is that you have a lot of senders, a lot of subscribers, um, and you can uh, subscribe to only the messages you want to uh, um, receive. And this is exactly what we're going to use uh, in this uh, second example. Um, in this example, I have 
in the center a Raspberry Pi. On the Raspberry Pi, Mosquito is running. Mosquito is one of those queuing systems. You have uh, um, Camel, you have, um, uh, you have ActiveMQ, you have different ones, but for the Raspberry Pi, you have Mos Mosquito, which is easy to install. I have a PC with a web browser to uh, talk to a web page, which is provided by the Java application on the Raspberry Pi. On the other side, I have a Java FX application which can again send events to this Mosquito. And the client of this Mosquito, this is only a single client, is this Arduino, uh, which is connected through Wi-Fi uh, to my uh, Raspberry Pi and which controls this LED strip. So all the uh, clients on the top um, can actually uh, tell the Arduino what to do with this LED strip. Now to uh, uh, use Mosquito on the, on the Raspberry Pi, we install it and we also install the client application uh, which can be used for, for testing purposes and we start it as a service. So whenever the Raspberry Pi starts, this Mosquito will be running and then we can open two terminals and in one we subscribe to a specific topic and in the other uh, terminal we publish something to test and then we see uh, whenever we publish something in the second terminal that it appears in the first one. Um, now, if we add a PC in this uh, network, um, and in this PC we have a Java FX application, which can send hello from PC to this mosquito, then you see that this message also appears on the Raspberry Pi, and vice versa, we can send messages in all directions. Ex uh, exactly what we were uh, looking for. Now, um, if we um, make a, a Java uh, FX user interface like this one, and again, I use the component of Gary Grunwald, I should start paying him, I think, because I use a lot of his components. And then you have these buttons to select the LED effect, uh, the LED strip effect you want uh, to be uh, done by the Arduino. And we have this small uh, web application, the small web page where we can select the red alert signal. Now, um, if we bring all this together then you get this so we have on the left side the pc on the back we have the screen of the raspberry pi with um, a terminal which just shows the messages which are passing uh, through the mosquito and here at the bottom we have an arduino which is listening to wi-fi uh, and is controlling this small led strip now if we run this and on the left uh, we select one of the led effects with one of these buttons we see on the top that a new message has arrived in the mosquito but we also see that the led effect has changed and that the arduino is actually listening to this mosquito so we can change the speed we can change color effects uh, there are different possibilities it just depends on what you can and want to program on that arduino and what effects you want to provide and we also have uh, this uh, small website and if we select the red alert then you see this flashing led strip okay it's time to wrap up, I think. What did we learn? That Java and Java FX on the Raspberry Pi really work. They are really powerful. Uh, if you combine them with electronics, it's really fun. Uh, you will learn a lot of new things. You will uh, burn a lot of components just like I did, but you will discover that this Raspberry Pi is really powerful, that components uh, are actually very easy to work with and that you can uh, find a tremendous amount of information on the internet. Um, to start building your own uh, experiments. What I especially love about Java and Java FX with that with minimal code, you can have big results. So if you want to have a user interface, you have Java FX, you have a lot of libraries available to build really nice, uh, good looking interfaces. You can style them with CSS, the things you know from, from designing your website, you can reuse them uh, all within uh, Java uh, FX. And there is a lot to look forward to. Uh, there is a lot of evolution in the native application stuff with Graal VM that will surely also come uh, to the Raspberry Pi. There's Pi4J, there are other libraries controlling the GPIOs. Java FX works perfectly on the Raspberry Pi and is also improving with that direct rendering with smooth animations and all uh, other things that's ongoing. If you want to learn more about this, uh, please do follow me uh, on my blog and Twitter. Uh, also follow me on fuji.io, uh, the friends of the open GDK. That's a new website that doesn't exist that long already, uh, where we do a new post every day. Some of them is about Raspberry Pi. Most of it's all about Java. Um, all tips from, from very experienced developers um, that you can learn a lot of. So please uh, follow this website. And 
I can only invite you to build, experiment, have, have fun. That's the only thing. Uh, we all want to have fun. And if we can use Java, which is uh, our instrument of choice, what we use daily uh, for work things, but also can uh, use it as a hobby project, then it becomes really fun and you will learn in uh, both directions. Uh, we will check if we have questions and if we can answer them here or uh, in the chat later. Um, and if you tweet something about this, if you do some uh, your own experiments, please share them with Java on Raspberry Pi hashtag as I monitor them and I'm very curious about what the people are building uh, with this kind of technology. Muktesh, over to you again. Thanks, Frank. That was a great talk. So uh, it was particularly interesting to me because I have been playing with Raspberry Pi. So I got a lot of good goodies from this talk. Yeah. So. Uh, we have a couple of questions. So one question is from JK uh, in the Discord asking, have you used Senset, Raspberry Pi Senset? Uh, not yet, no, that's one. Of, oh, I have so many things on my list of things I want to try out. <laughs> um, the fun thing about Senset is that you have a lot of components already on there um, and that you uh, can get started directly with it. The, the backdrop of it is that it was designed again for Python um, and that it um, that there are libraries pre-created for it, which are all uh, directed to Python. So it's uh, I think there are some projects to also support it with Java, uh, but I don't know the state of it. I should check it out. Okay. So thank you. Uh, we have a second question from Christian asking: Is the Raspberry Pi in place just for using Java with Pi 4J? Arduino, Arduino itself could be strong enough to do all that. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and Arduino is even, I think, more shoot, suitable for stuff like uh, that LED strip that I showed you. Um, and that's actually why I use an Arduino. There are a lot of libraries for Arduino to control, for instance, a LED strip. Uh, why I chose to combine it with the Raspberry Pi is because I want this touchscreen user interface. I want to use a JavaFX user interface. Um, so there you have the choice. Uh, what is also great on, on the Raspberry Pi is that you can run, for instance, a Spring application with an H2 database if you want to store stuff. That's not something you do on, a, on an Arduino. So I have to say I'm not anti-Python. I'm not anti-Arduino, of course. You have to choose the right tool for the job. And in some cases, an Arduino is more than enough. It's just where you want to go the extra mile with an, a user interface or with a database or, or reading a file or storing stuff in a file. There it becomes more easy and more understandable to, to, to combine it with Java. And that's uh, exactly what I do. Awesome. So we have another question from Christian asking, could you use a free online MQTT server to sync using the data in the Java FX interface and lose the, Rasp lose the Raspberry Pi? Uh, I don't understand it completely, but I think, um, so I combine it again, sometimes with the PC indeed, where I have uh, the user interface running and then some other stuff to store data. Again, you have to choose the right tool for the job. That's exactly the same thing we do at work. Um, we, uh, I think most of the people here in this event are Java lovers. Sometimes you have to agree Java is not the right tool for this specific requirement. So you have to combine it. Um, that's why I have, I ha even have an example in, in the book where I use Python to actually control the electronics, but Java FX for the user interface because I found a, a, an existing Python script to control um, uh, one specific component, a, a chip, uh, for this uh, this small uh, let uh, this number display, so I used the Python code there and I combined it with Java FX to just run this Python code with an uh, with an argument. So again, it's choosing the right tool for the job. And uh, again, another question from GeoAxis. I wonder if you can if one can run Java FX on Raspberry Pi, but compiled as a native image. I see that it's possible to run Quarkus native yeah. running on a Raspberry Pi. I know you have talked about Graal VM support, yeah. so would you um, mind touching that? I have tried it, but I failed, but it's months ago. And at that time, so um, there are two things. Uh, first, Raspberry Pi OS is 32-bit and Graal VM is, uh, is aiming at 64-bit systems. 
Um, and there is some work ongoing on a 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS, and also uh, Ubuntu has a 64-bit OS. So there it should be possible, but I'm not sure if GraalVM really uh, is aiming already at the ARM processor, but it is all ongoing. And that's why I say there is a big evolution going on this, in this field. Um, I think it's time for me to go back to a few experiments, I hope in the coming weeks with GraalVM and native. But again, Gluon is really working again uh, uh, on this JavaFX stuff. They have uh, Gluon Substrate, uh, which helps to build JavaFX applications and build them as native applications. That's what I've done in this blog post to deliver. Um, so actually, I want to extend my ex existing application example, this proof of concept application, um, which ends up in the app stores, but I want to build a sixth version, which is aiming at the Raspberry Pi. So I hope to finish that soon. But um, yeah, it's all uh, work in progress and, and, and there is a lot of evolution all, uh, going on there. 